Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at ion propulsion. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we understand ion propulsion, we have to understand the physics of it. Now, physics in this scenario is very simple. It's nothing fancy, nothing complicated. We have Sir Isaac Newton to thank for that. And all you have to understand is action equals reaction. That's it. There is nothing uh, fancy about it. So either you throw a lot or you throw very fast, whatever you are throwing. Now, in this scenario, throwing like how you see this rocket engine and Saturn V and uh, this diagram what you are throwing is molecules now those molecules you can store either in liquid form like uh, kerosene and liquid oxygen and then you burn it and then you throw it out in gas form or you can do uh, ions so at the end of the day is basically you are doing two things two things that you are throwing out you are trying to throw them out as fast as you can because if you use hydrogen as it used in for its upper stage you will get a lot of uh, velocity but if you used heavier element that you are throwing uh, and you know you throw a lot of them like a boost stage you'll get a lot of thrust so these are the two component of it you throw a lot and you throw it as fast as you can so this is the physics aspect of it that's all you have to understand now so if you want to understand ion propulsion now or ion thrusters all you have to understand is every rocket that we have that is big that gets things off the ground is generally relying on what we call oxidation basically burning the fuel now fuel could be anything it could be rp1 basically kerosene it could be methane or it could be uh, a liquid hydrogen or it could be nitrous oxide also so all things combined all we are doing is just taking a fuel mixing it with oxygen and that's uh, reaction is called oxidation and using that we are releasing chemical energy using that we are getting our thrust now that is common in every rocket be it solid booster be it liquid booster or be it hybrid however in ion thrusters we are replacing that oxidation stage itself and replacing it with ionization now ionization is a kind of different uh, thing all you have to understand uh, if you are stripping electrons away from a uh, element or basically a gas or whatever have you it you put a, like you create a scenario where you have um, basically charged particles that charged particles is what we call ions now ions have the benefit that uh, you can control it back with magnetism or electricity itself like basically you have uh, anode or cathode ions will flow so using these two principles that you can use uh, magnets to you know propel it or the fact you can simply have two diodes uh, diode i'm saying basically two uh, conducting material so basically one is uh, throwing the positive item another is uh, absorbing the negative item you can easily get the propulsion item so in this scenario the same way the normal rockets are dual propellant system basically you have oxygen and uh, fuel here also it's a dual system basically you need electricity to do that ionization acceleration using magnets or uh, you know uh, creating basically what we call electrical field you need electricity for that but electricity itself will not gonna get uh, you know do anything you need fuel for that now in this scenario fuel could be any gas that easily ionizes so it's not a single component so it it still suffers from the same fact that you need two things you can't just run it on one you cannot be like okay i have millions of solar panel and tada i have thrust it will not work you need fuel and if you have just the fuel it will not work if you unless you have the energy to ionize it now on top of that this is the simple aspect of it, using electricity it gives very 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 high specific impulse now all you have to uh, comprehend about a specific impulse is that is the mileage of a rocket that's it now uh, be mindful that only describes the mileage it does not describe the horsepower of it so if somebody says that you know this rocket can go uh, very far you simply ask them what is the specific impulse now specific impulse will tell you how big the fuel tank has to be fuel tank in this scenario is basically oxygen plus the uh, whatever fuel they are carrying so if specific impulse is low like for uh, boosters it's generally uh, it's like a very inefficient efficient but we use that inefficient engine because it gives a lot of thrust basically it's like high horsepower cars are generally less fuel efficient compared to a low one so it's as simple as that so generally we measure specific impulse in second and if you want to uh, give a context to that is generally below 500 second is what you can get or expect from a combustion engine basically where you are combining uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen that's the best you can do and no practical engine even reaches that point so 500 seconds of specific impulse is considered awesome in 
uh, you know chemical engines so some engines can push a little bit here and there but that's the upper limit however in this puppies you can easily start off from 1500 and go upwards to 10,000 so be mindful if mileage is a criteria these puppies are you know the granddaddy of it but because it has ludicrously high uh, specific emphasis also pays the price the price being the thrust out of these puppies are minuscule the basically if you are familiar with rockets you must say everybody is saying you know it has 500 kilo newton it has one mega newton and like newton big newton words these are micro newtons of thrust basically if uh, somebody can build a ion propulsion that can give you one newton of thrust it would be probably consuming hundreds of kilowatt of electrical energy so be mindful it is very weak the thrust out of it it's very weak that's why you don't see rockets uh, you know uh, that have battery and this fuel it simply does not provide enough thread, it cannot get off the ground. So what are the pros of it? Why the heck, if it can't get you off the ground, why the hell we are even talking about it? Well, what do you do when you are in space? You can fire these engines and because it has very low fuel requirement, I'm talking, uh, let's say you want to get equivalent delta V as in change in velocity, as in kilometer per second that you want to add to your uh, uh, craft. If you try to do that with uh, chemical fuel, be it peroxide fuels or be it, uh, you know, simple liquid hydrogen and oxygen, you're going to spend tons of fuel to change, do that. However, if you have a solar panel or nuclear reactor or RTGs to provide you with electricity, you can do that uh, same velocity change. Like, you know, let's say you want to add 10 kilometer per second on top of whatever you got from your rocket. You can do that with few kilos of, uh, you know, uh, propellant because this is so efficient that is crucial so let's say you are building a satellite which has like you know giant solar panels so electricity you are getting from sun that's out of the question you know the final mark but uh, uh, using how much fuel you need you need very little like satellites that use ion propulsion for uh, you know station keeping basically they make sure the orbit remains per perfectly you know balanced uh, they spend very little amount of propellant basically one or two kilos not uh, 10 liters or 50 liters of hydrogen they need to have for uh, you know station keeping and it has very long endurance now that simply uh, because i already said it has very low thrust you have to keep it running for very long time so think of it this way if you are firing a rocket right now rocket will go forward but if you fire an iron engine it will uh, it will start slowly 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 now if you are going to the moon don't even consider about iron engine now if you're going to mars now the rocket engine is going to start very fast it's like let's say i'm talking from orbit not from earth so you have both have same orbital velocity now uh, all the chemical engines gonna be like it's gonna get very long now if you start the iron engine uh, at first one week you will have very slow speed at second week you have a bit more at third week you're still more at one month now you are matching the speed that a chemical engine have at two months you are still accelerating at three months you are still accelerating so the longer the duration of your acceleration you can reach very high speed so imagine it this way your rocket is like a quick boost it's like boosh done this iron engine is like continuously working now how far uh, you can go you can go very far if you have the energy as in the electrical energy needed for this system you can go very far and you can go very fast like let's say chemical engine will take five million years to go to alpha century uh, this can do it in very very reasonable amount of time which we call 50,000 years so yeah it is very fast the longer the distance the more uh, practical these becomes because they have very long endurance the engines can keep uh, keep running for continuously for months to years it's not like uh, you have rocket engines where you have to maintain for the cooling system and all all that other things uh, the endurance on these puppies are very phenomenal and it's very controlled and gentle it, because there is no explosion it's very uh, controlled like in these satellites you don't need gimbals uh, fancy gimbals and like you know way to contain the explosion it's very gentle now uh, gentle and the fact that it's very controlled as in the thrust output is also very controlled well let's say you only need mini school of thrust and I'm talking minuscule from its perspective, uh, you can do that. Like in many of you know who, who have been following SpaceX, is like they say like throttling a rocket engine is very difficult. It's very tough. It's, you cannot go from 0% throttle to 100% throttle reliably. Like you can generally have a operational range where you 100 to 70% is the throttle. You know, they can go it very uh, down, but they cannot go very low. But in these puppy, you can go like 1% throttle, 15% throttle. 100% throttle like this whole aspect of controllability uh, really allows you to keep station keeping properly 
and it has almost no moving part aside from the fact that you have an injector that is you know injecting the fuel uh, inherently itself it does not have turbo pumps it does not have like you know cooling uh, fluid running around it to you know uh, basically liquid uh, hydrogen or oxygen running around to cool the chamber it's very simple it has almost no moving parts inherently so now the reason why i'm not gonna give you a breakdown of iron engines because there are hundreds of it so this is a very rough idea is basically you put uh, uh, electron gun basically what you used to have in your old uh, TV CRT TV and it's giving you xenon and using that you are creating a basically charged scenario here using magnets you are accelerating them and uh, to help things along you have a grid here which is negative grid you have firing electrons you have negative grid to absorb it but you also have another neutralizing aspect because if you don't neutralize it even though you are getting acceleration here the uh, positive particles that are leaving they will come back so you will get a very little efficiency so for that reason to make sure they don't come back they don't interact with this grid you also need what we call neutralizing electron agents so it's a very simple inherently it's very simple it's just a uh, basically it's more or less crt tvs so what are the consequences of it the first and the most obvious one is very uh, weak and then when i say weak i don't even mean it like you know okay let's say it's weak enough that it can't get you off the ground uh, but in space also it's very weak like uh, if you want to do dodge uh, let's say a debris is coming to your satellite and you want to dodge it you can't dodge using this you need peroxide fuels for uh, you know dodging maneuvers you can't do quick maneuvers using this it's very weak even in space now the fact that uh, even though you need very little amount of fuel you need insane amount of power to get even a reasonable amount of thrust now efficiency wise if you are talking about a kilowatt to thrust it's very efficient it's like uh, on orders in magnitude uh, more efficient than rocket engines you can achieve 50 to 80 percent efficiency from uh, you know electrical energy to propulsion energy however you still need power and what when i mean power limited Think of it this way the solar panels that you put on your spacecraft while it's launched from earth it will have a lot of power because you know it's closer to sun now while it's going to mars it will lose power and the, consequently your rocket engine will also lose power because ions need electricity to work so for this reason they are very power limited so all the dawn mission and deep horizon missions that uh, use ion engines they are generally uh, in very elliptical orbit sometimes uh, they only use this when they are uh, facing the sun and uh, not to mention that you can't expect these to you know go to pluto you can't uh, reliably use these to go to pluto and that's why pluto has uh, everything we sent to pluto has generally has rtgs now the fuel in itself is xenon now you might be like okay xenon is not that expensive you know it is present in your uh, basically flashlights and uh, flashlight i'm saying flash lamps and uh, commercial light applications that's true but when you're talking about kilos of it and when you're talking about the tons and tons that you will need for human mission the cost starts to pile up and this xenon is very pure the uh, quality of xenon used for space mission uh, let's just say it's very 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 expensive and when you're talking about one or two kilos it's manageable but uh, when you need uh, tons and tons of it now of course you don't need 500 tons you may only need for two to three tons but still it's two three tons of very very expensive thing now there has been some research into making some things that uh, use uh, you know simpler thing like argons which is very abundant so it's quite cheap but right now we generally use uh, xenon so these are the consequences the serious fact that is power limited secondary fact that is very weak even in space and the fact the fuel right now cost now this can be solved if you have enough money so what we can expect in the future now the biggest pro uh, problem with uh, this ion engine is power now how can we solve power is basically compact and light nuclear fusion reactors all we need now i will provide the link down below where you can see nasa's kilo power basically it's a nuclear reactor which is very light very small and can provide upwards of 10 kilowatts of electrical energy the benefit of that is that if you put it in you know in your spacecraft you can send it as far as you can as long as this is working and because uh, the acceleration builds up over time you can let's say you launch it today uh, the rocket will like you know leave it uh, in behind in first few minutes now in months time this will start to catch up in year time it will exceed in two three years it will be so far so fast like you can literally try to catch up with uh, voyager basically uh, that is traveling at upwards of what 19 kilometers a second you can do th those for, uh, kind of acceleration so if you're sw sending very far using nuclear reactors you can reach pluto in like uh, instead of 10 year mission you can do pluto in let's say six or three years if you have powerful uh, things so 
we need power that's the biggest limitation second uh, the engines right now that are in use they are very small they are like 10 kilowatts 50 kilowatts we need a megawatt scale to really push human scale ships for this reason there are some attempts to make uh, very big engines and there has been some uh, recent attempts to go in a different direction iron engines uh, is one type of electrical engines there is another one which we call plasma engines i will make another video on that so basically iron engines right now is very size limited now to push something really big you really need something big and powerful because even though acceleration will be you know uh, gained over time your uh, if components will break down like uh, let's say the, even this engine it can run continuously but does not mean it can run continuously for 100 years so we have to make sure that it gives out enough power that time window for a useful extraction shrinks so this was my presentation on iron engines. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If it didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment uh, on my videos. And uh, I would ask you to please subscribe, share it amongst your friends, and uh, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.